Welcome to Behind the Headlines. Today we're talking about the Peninsula Photo Contest, the art of photography, and what's going on at the Palo Alto Art Center. I'm joined by weekly staff photographer Veronica Weber and our special guest Karen Kinsel, director of the Palo Alto Art Center. So welcome. Thank you. Um, this week we published 12 winning entries from our annual photo contest, which we actually haven't held since 2013. And Karen, I understand that you played a big role in getting the contest started again, so why don't you tell me what you did and why it was so important to get this thing going? Yes, um, so I have wonderful memories of the Palo Alto Weekly Photo Competition at the Art Center. It was always a really incredible exhibition with a great amount of community support. Um, after the Art Center closed for renovation and reopens, we kind of just got off track doing the competition, and, um, and so I was curious about whether we should look at bringing it back. And so we started actually with a focus group of local photographers and photography instructors, um, just bringing people together to talk about, do we think if the, there'll be interest in the community if we bring this back? And overwhelmingly, people were so passionate about, we need to do this, this mm -hmm. needs to happen. And so it was like, okay, let's make it happen. Great, and I know that you helped steer the entire project. so. What things, I know you did some things differently this year, so yeah. what things were different in, um, in terms of categories, entries, things like that? Yeah, so we've had, I don't know how many years we hosted the Palo Alto Photo Contest before. Um, I've been judging it for at least four or five times prior to that, prior to 2013, probably I don't know, 2009, sometime right around then. Mm -hmm. And uh, we changed it. So the old format used to be we had three categories, which were portraits, um, views of the bay, which were all kinds of images that were shot um, around the peninsula. And it was really open-ended. And then we had another category, which was views beyond the bay, which is anything outside of that. So a lot of travel photography, anything that would have been taken outside of Palo Alto Mountain View um, Peninsula area. And that contest was really limited to entrants who only lived or worked in Palo Alto. So we got a fair amount, but we only had the three categories. And the three categories were kind of broad. You know, we would have views taken of the bay. So people were, you know, submitting in abstract shots. You know, we had this really amazing one, I think, from 2013, which was this, like, close-up of the shell. Um, to like really cool kind of black and white images of like power lines and kind of the grid lines that you get from those um, to sometimes people would put portraits because they got some great photos of their you know travels around the world and so it was really it was a different contest and it was a little harder to judge that way um, so I mean Karen came to us and she really wanted to reinvigorate um, the photo contest and so you know, what we wanted to do was just open it up to more categories, mm -hmm. to people beyond just living in Palo Alto, because we really wanted to increase the visibility and of the contest, and also just kind of encourage more photographers to enter in, because, I mean, there's so many talented people here in the peninsula, and we really wanted to kind of give them that space, that platform, that opportunity mm -hmm. to show their work. Um, and this was also tied to our sister publication, The 650, which is um, you know, this really great online magazine um, that covers everything um, within the 650 area code. So we wanted to partner up with, our, with the 650 as well. And so what kind of response did you end up getting? We got a really, really <laughs> good response. I mean, mm -hmm. we kind of thought, OK, it's been dormant for mm -hmm. many years. Okay. We don't know if we're going to get that many people. Um, because in the previous years, the entrance, the number kept dwindling. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's also part of the reason why we just kind of, it kind of fell off of our radar. Yeah. Um, so we thought, okay, we're not quite sure, but we were really surprised. So it was a very different format this year where people only entered in their images online through a website that was created, mm -hmm. um, the Peninsula Photo Contest. And it was really easy to submit their entries. Um, and you could submit like, I forget how many, up to 10. Yes. Um, 
And we got about 740 mm -hmm. entries and like over 127 <laughs> photographers. Yeah. So I think we were really blown away. And the yeah. judges, we just were like, we have so many images yeah. to have to look through. So do you really see incredible. a shift in, um, in like the types of images or who was submitting? Um, because it seems like with phone cameras and changes in technologies, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like it's maybe changing photography a bit. Did yeah. you find that? I think so. I mean, you see all those ads for like <laughs> yeah. shot by iPhone, yeah. all those yeah. billboards across. And I think there's a reason because the iPhone and yep. the Android, you know, the Samsung phones, mm -hmm. they have incredible image resolution. Yes. I mean, one of the funny things I always say about photography, it's like the iPhones have better resolution than the professional camera I was using like five years ago. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's just so incredible. You have this really pretty decent camera that yes. you can carry around in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of, in, we got a fair amount of um, digital photos yeah, well, that I were shot all by all iPhone. Of, all of the photos are just so incredible. I don't even have a favorite. They're just yeah. all, yeah. especially reading uh, what the photographers said mm -hmm. about how they captured each shot was just really interesting. Yeah. Um, did you want to talk about some of the photos? Yeah, um, like I said, we were just kind of blown away by the response and the judging process was really great. Um, so everyone submitted stuff. Um, it was a total blind contest, so we had no idea who, we didn't know, we didn't have the names, we didn't have any info, just kind of the information that people submitted, the kind of description info about how they took the shot and what was kind of their message or their... Did you know if, if, it, if it was a youth entry or an adult entry? Yes, okay. yeah. So we, the judges, we kind of just looked, so we did the first round where we just looked at everything. We looked through all 740 and we rated them. And from there, we kind of picked the top, oh, I don't know, 100 or so altogether. Um, we met here at the weekly and just had this really um, rigorous debate um, about which ones we wanted to be the finalists. And that was another difference this year is we just had 12 finalists. So we didn't do any secondary or third place um, winners. We wanted to just honor the, the image that really um, struck us in yeah. each category. And so, um, yeah, we just had these really incredible shots. I think the one that's, was, that stood out to all the judges immediately, I mean, we're looking through 740, is our best in show winner, which was shot by Dan Fenstermacher, and it's called Beautiful Chaos. And he shot this, it's this beautiful black and white image. It was taken in Havana, I think, mm -hmm. when he was traveling in Cuba. And I think the story was he was just sitting outside of a cafe with his friends and just kind of noticed this like wonderful little corner where all these people were kind of whizzing by and he would just kind of keep returning to that scene. And this was an image that all the judges, we just saw it immediately and we're like, this is our best in show. It's a really, it's a real clear it's winner because image. it just has all these elements, mm -hmm. yeah, all these layers. I mean, you have people walking past, mm -hmm. you got like this kind of like bicycle taxi riding through, mm -hmm. you got this beautiful like colonial style architecture, the old car. So it just has all these beautiful layers. Yep. Um, I remember one of the judges in talking about this, Margot, was saying that this is really the kind of quintessential embodiment of the Henri yeah. Cartier-Bresson kind of decisive moment. Yeah. You know, this is street photography at its best, the yeah. ability to capture one um, just a moment um, that you would see on the street. And that's exactly what the mm -hmm. photographer said. He said, mm -hmm. like, he likes to catch a moment mm -hmm. that and just so it's there forever, just yes. like a fleeting moment. Indeed. Yeah. And there were just so many other great ones, too. I mean, Rebecca Mox, she shot um, See Me, which is our black and white portrait um, in our youth category. And that was very dynamic, too. We saw that, and it just caught our eye. Um, and it was just this really great portrait where she kind of comes from this, you know, this really dark, um, you know, room. And, you know, she's just comes straight into the light yes. and she has, she has the Chinese character for see me and she has this really great message too where it was her message it was kind of for a school project that uh, she goes to Castilea mm -hmm. and it's all kind of creating um, this presence of like Asian Americans in the media in the US mm -hmm. and she really wanted to kind of send this message it's like we are above our stereotypes like we need to come forward step into the light show us show the world you know, what we are capable of, we're not just the stereotypes. We, so it's demanding to pay attention mm -hmm. to the issues of um, race in mm -hmm. America. So but yeah. when you were judging that, you didn't have any background. And it's no, still true. So when you were, looking at, when you were looking at it, like, like what, 
because I would pick all of them. Like, what came yeah. across, or, or what did you did you get that she was trying to? Pur- I didn't at first, yeah. but that was the great thing is yeah. that we could see the descriptions yeah. that the photographers they would put information in the, the little box so we could kind of read what their messaging mm-hmm. was. Because at first, I was just like, "Oh, it's so dark. I just kind of see, you know, her her head and her yeah. hand." I don't quite know what she's meaning to do. And then you read the description and you're like, wow, okay, mm-hmm. I see it. Yeah, and our judges were also really like, boom, this commands so much attention. Yeah. Um, it's just a very yeah, dynamic portrait. I wanted to ask you about this night side 10 that Molly Christman did. Yeah. How did she do that? Because that was with her <laughs> phone, right? Yeah, she was using so, an iPad. An and iPad. I guess there's a filter on there. In their camera application, so she took a lot That's of photos, it. and they all were like a collage, or how? No, no, no. It's no. just reflections. Oh, really? Uh, she just Amazing. noticed these incredible layers um, in the reflection of her window. I think her house next door was getting remodeled, or something like that. Oh, and she wow. just noticed all these elements, like the car and the chandelier, um, kind of. So when you're shooting in through the window, not mm-hmm. only are you getting the reflections from yeah. the outside, mm-hmm. but you're also seeing what's happening inside. Ah, now it makes sense. Yeah, okay. so it's just, just this, it was really cool. Yeah, but it's kind of just this other um, look, another form of reality, which yeah. really fit into the abstract mm-hmm. category really, really well. And this was a new category this year, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Karen, you really pushed for that yeah, category. Yeah, and, and there's really compelling photographs that came out of that category as well. What kind of feedback have you been getting? Because all of these photos are on exhibit at the art center. Yes. So yeah. have you been getting a lot of people? And what kind of feedback have you been getting? People love the photographs. I mean, yeah. it's been a really wonderful exhibition for us. Um, I, I just really want to highlight the diversity of photographers um, at the opening. It was so wonderful to see such a diverse range. So, of course, youth photographers. And then we had seniors. Um, we had a wide range of cameras being used. You know, some um, photographers who were a little more serious. So, you know, our, our, our winner, for example, who actually teaches photography, but then some really true amateurs. And it was one of the judges who said, you know, photography brings people together. And um, I really felt like it was this wonderful intersection of photography and the community. And it's really wonderful for visitors to be able to see the exhibition and see the great work. So um, if we can move on from the contest. Yeah. Do you want to talk about what is going on at the Art Center? What sure. are some things you planned? And- yeah, well, I just want to highlight, you know, one of the, the kind of critical um, pieces of our identity as an institution is this notion that everyone is an artist. And that's why this exhibition is so important to us, um, mm-hmm. because we really truly believe that. And for us, if an exhibition encourages someone to make art, it's a successful exhibition. And so... I think visitors can come and see the Palo Alto Weekly Photo Exhibition and see work that inspires them to take their phone right in their pocket and take a photograph. Um, Or it might encourage them to take a photography class. We offer digital photography classes for youth and also for adults. There's been a huge amount of interest in digital photography. I think, again, because photography is ubiquitous, right? We have cameras with us all the time with our phones. Um, So many of us participate in social media. And it's very image intensive, so we're all engaging with photography. And so it's really rewarding for us to be able to really spotlight the work of local artists and highlight the fact that we are all artists. So um, lots happening at the Art Center always. We serve 120,000 people with a diverse range of programs. We're gearing up for summer camps, um, and so we'll have about 1,000 kids in our building this summer, um, participating in a broad range of summer camp activities. And then we're also celebrating a summer of collage this summer. So last summer was the summer of photography. This summer is the summer of collage. We have an exhibition that actually opens a week from Saturday uh, called Paper Cuts, which is large-scale collage artwork. And we're doing a series of programs that celebrate collage. Family workshops, workshops for adults, classes, a family day coming up this summer. Um, Collage is an incredibly accessible uh, art form in addition to photography. Um, You don't necessarily have to have drawing skills to be able to create a successful collage. And so we're really looking forward to celebrating the medium uh, in a variety of programs this summer. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to see yeah. that. I love collages. <laughs> I know. There's some good and good photo collages. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, because I use stuff. so much photography, too. And Indeed. It's like kind of, you can take those elements of photography and piece it together in this whole other exactly. medium. It's really neat. Yeah, and so we've actually got some artists who've created some site-specific works for us, which is always very exciting to commission mm -hmm. artists to create new work. And we've also encouraged some artists who traditionally work small to work in large scale, which is also really exciting. Ooh, it's a good challenge. Kind of be exactly pushing them to kind of um, take on new directions in their artwork. Now, for the photos um, yes. from the contest, mm -hmm. um, it's the 12 winning photos, and then there's, what, 20 additional honorable yeah. mention photos mm -hmm. that are all on display mm -hmm. at the center? Yes. How long will they be on display there? Yes. So they are going to be on view until the 17th. Yeah. And these were really great images too. Um, I mean, it was so hard to decide just 12. So the judges and I were looking through all these images and we're like, and some, we had to kind of battle it out. We didn't quite flip a coin, but sometimes it was just, it was like, okay, everyone take a vote. Yes. Um, because our honorable mentions are really incredible as well. And we really mm -hmm. wanted to give them the space so yeah. that people from the community could see them. Mm -hmm. Because um, there's just these really brilliant ones, like the abstract ones. Some of the portraits, um, the youth portraits in particular, I felt really needed to have mm -hmm. yeah. that display so people could just really see the talent mm -hmm. of the young photographers out there. And yeah, and we definitely want to thank the judges for their incredible work. Um, uh, there's been a tradition of the weekly engaging local photographers, and it was really we had. Extraordinary judges. Yeah. So thank you, including Yeah, Alaska. of course. <laughs> Happy to do it. Is there anything else you wanted to add about the contest or anything about the art center? Um, we encourage people to check out the show and come to some of our programs. Just a reminder that on Friday, June 22nd, we have our opening for the Paper Cut Show. It's Friday night at the Art Center. So from 7 to 10 p.m., come to the Art Center, um, have a cocktail from our cash bar, um, participate in some hands-on art making. We'll have a collage activity and meet the artists and see the exhibition. Yeah, and, you know, all the photographers out there, you know, hold on to those photos for next yeah, year. I exactly. Say, I think this is going to spark another contest. No? Yeah, so. that's the plan. <laughs> we want to keep it going because, yeah, it's just, and as a judge, it's just really awesome to Indeed. see what, because it helps me, like, look at photography in a exactly. new way. Indeed. And just really appreciate how people see the world. Indeed. Yeah. Great. Well, I guess that wraps up this week's Behind the Headlines. If you liked what you saw, click below. If you want to stay up to date on local news, go to paloaltoonline.com or follow us on social media. Thanks.